Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you are fine. So uh, this talk is about uh, interactions between number theory and multifractal analysis. Multifractal analysis is a quite recent branch of mathematics that consists in studying such function which uh, show very high irregularity, local irregular, irregularity uh, behavior. Uh, so I, I will say more about uh, everyone uh, hear me? That's okay? Perfect. Ah, okay, I, um, I have some noise, so I would. Okay, so I, I will start uh, right away with a few definitions, and then only after uh, we'll uh, explain the direction, uh, the main orientation of this talk. Okay, yes. So, um, so we need a tool to measure how a um, uh, function can be irregular. Uh, in the neighborhood of the point x naught, so we consider f uh, locally bounded function, and uh, we consider here um, generalization of a Taylor expansion. So we say that f is in C beta x naught if uh, f is well approximated by a polynomial in x minus x naught, and with precision uh, absolute value of x minus x naught to the beta. Uh, in the neighborhood of x naught, uh, so uh, and p is a polynomial with degree less than beta. With this definition, uh, p uh, is unique, and uh, actually the other exponent is the supremum of uh, uh, all, uh, all of the beta such that the f is in C beta x naught. Okay, and uh, for some functions. Uh, it may happen that this holder exponent changes very widely from point to point. And so to measure this phenomenon, to, to have a good idea of it, we can consider the ISO holder sets. So the set of points which share the same holder exponent. Um, and for so, uh, some very, say, weird functions, uh, this ISO under sets may be fractal. Uh, so, uh, whatever fractal may uh, mean, there is no precise definition for it, but think of something, uh, of some set with uh, totally disconnected, with some uh, self similarity uh, property. And uh, what we can do to evaluate uh, actually uh, how uh, uh, this ISO under set look like is actually to, to measure the size. Uh, the Lebesgue measure is not the right tool for this uh, because generally uh, there is one ISO under set which is of full measure. And the other, of course, of our Lebesgue measure zero. So the, the good, uh, it turns out that the good uh, tool to measure the size is the Hausdorff dimension. And so we compute the multifactor spectrum, so uh, the uh, application that maps uh, beta to the Hausdorff dimension to the ISO, ISO under sets of index beta. And we say that uh, there is no uh, definition, uh, uh, there is no agreement on the definition of what a multifractal function is, but some authors say that Say that uh, a function is multifractal if the image of uh, df contains a non empty open interval, uh, reflecting the, uh, how chaotic is uh, the local irregularity uh, regularity of f. So, and uh, it turns out that such function um, can occur when modeling some uh, physical phenomenon. Historical, historically, this was uh, for the study of the fully developed uh, turbulence uh, theory developed by Kolmogorov. Um, but uh, we can meet uh, we can meet such a function in other area, uh, traffic analysis, modeling of economic signal, and uh, other uh, other areas. And um, First, uh, now mathematically, mathematically speaking, the first problem is: Does there exist such function? Uh, such a function. 
which is a multifractal. And the answer to this is non trivial. Uh, there are several ways to uh, build uh, some uh, multifractal function. Uh, one way is to uh, consider some functional space and use some bare argument, which tells you that there are plenty of multifractal function, but of course, which uh, this argument gives you not an example, pre uh, effective example of it. Uh, you can also consider some uh, stochastic uh, sample path of uh, stochastic uh, process. But, uh, and here we are uh, exploring an, another way, uh, which is simply considering uh, infinite series, uh, which are made, let's say, uh, to, to produce some uh, high ir uh, local irregularity. And it turns out that many of these functions uh, are connected or arise from a number theoretic situation. And so my point here is to draw some examples uh, met in the literature and uh, to explain uh, some ideas. Uh, so this is more an expository, expository talk than uh, focusing on the recent results. And uh, okay, I, I will not always give uh, precise uh, assertions. Uh, I will focus more on the, on the ideas. Okay, so let's try to uh, get, uh, I mean, first, first, um, two remarks, some remarks on the multifractal function. So I uh, put here, put here the, the definitions of the order exponent. And uh, yes, first, note that uh, the definition is made so that uh, the cusp uh, absolute value x minus x naught to the beta has uh, as expected, an exponent equal to beta, except, of course, when beta is an even integer. Uh, in this case, f is c infinite, and the other exponent is also infinite. Another uh, remark, uh, uh, because of stellar Young formula, if f is n times differentiable at x naught, then the other exponent is larger than n. And so, considering this uh, last remark, it's quite natural to, um, uh, when uh, searching for a multifractal function, to look at uh, the example of functions which are continuous but nowhere differentiable. Uh, and an example we, uh, I, uh, we probably, uh, you probably uh, encountered uh, during your study is uh, Weierstrass functions, which are, let's say, highly uh, lacunary uh, trigonometric series, uh, but it turns out that uh, these functions are not uh, multifractal, but they are monofractal. Uh, here, uh, we have, I adopt uh, a normalization so that uh, the order exponent is equal to A at every point. Uh, this kind of result can be shown by using a uh, wavelet argument, something I will explain later. So, uh, so it doesn't work. And now the first example arising from a uh, number of theoretic situation is a very famous uh, result by Delange uh, in 1975. Um, so this is about the average order of the sum of digits. So here I focus on the case uh, you know, on, uh, on base two. So uh, here we sum all the sum of uh, uh, we sum the sum of binary digits of n up to capital N. Uh, so the expected value is one half times number of terms times so uh, the expected uh, the the number of digits of uh, n. So log n in base two. And here uh, the rest uh, actually the Lange proves that uh, this is a function of a fractional part of log n in base two, and g is a continuous and nowhere differentiable uh, function. Actually, for this case, we have uh, an explicit uh, we have a representation in, uh, as an infinite series of g, where there is a Lipschitz continuous function. And so here is a graph of uh, g. But again, it turns out that this function is uh, monofractal. Uh, all uh, other exponents are equal to one. 
Uh, so, and uh, one paper, when this is implicitly done, is a paper by Tenenbaum in 1997. And, of course, I focus on the case of the sum of binary digits, but uh, this is uh, true also, this phenomenon hold, holds for uh, many other, say, uh, digital functions. Okay, so now I will uh, present the first, our first example of uh, multifractal function. This is not the first uh, uh, historical uh, multifractal function. Uh, uh, ne nevertheless, uh, this function, actually not this one, uh, okay, first the definition, sorry. Um, so we consider the sawtooth function, function B, the first binary function. So this is the fractional part of x minus one half if x is not an integer and zero else. And so we consider a weighted sum of dilatation of B. So weighted by one over n squared. So we have a normally convergent series. Uh, so which defines a continuous function. And in fact, uh, Riemann consider this function, which is uh, almost the same, uh, when presenting his uh, theory of integration, because uh, this function is uh, integrable in Riemann's sense, but uh, is not in the Cauchy uh, theory integration. Um, okay, so let's try to uh, study the local growth of H2, uh, uh, H2, yes, so we write this, and uh, we have to study actually how many integers uh, there are between uh, nx and nx plus nh. And you can uh, actually, the, uh, you can take, let's say, uh, h uh, sufficiently uh, small and um, restrict yourself to n not too large, so that actually nh is less than 1. The, the other terms are, uh, can be trivially bounded. And so you, you are interested in the fact if there, are, there is or not an integer between nx and nx plus nh. And whatever um, uh, nh can be small, but if nx is very close from an integer, then you may encounter a jump, and so uh, an irregularity uh, behavior, local irregularity behavior. So we have to measure how close nx is from uh, an integer. And then the right, the right tool for this is the theory of continued fraction that was uh, already presented uh, 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 in this conference, as uh, I state it, I um, present it again. So we can consider the sequence of the what is called the best denominators. So the Q, K. Uh, so here uh, the norm of uh, Y denotes the distance from Y to the set of integers, and so the Q, K uh, satisfies um, the norm of Q, K, X is less than Q the norm of qx for all q less than qk. So we choose pk, the closest integer from qkx, and this sequence of fractions, pk over qk, is called the sequence of convergence uh, of x. And uh, so this, the, these are, in the sense, in the sense described here, uh, the best approximation, uh, rational approximation of x. And we have the uh, well-known uh, lower and upper bound for the distance from x to uh, pk over qk. And so here this is less than 1 over qk square. But it may happen that for infinitely many k, uh, you have here uh, something better than 1 over qk uh, to the square. You may have a better exponent than 2. And this is uh, how uh, I introduce the irrationality exponent of x. So this is the supremum of such exponent mu, such that there are infinitely many k, such that the distance of x to my pq over qk is less than 1 over qk to the mu. And so uh, Nikolai Moshevitin already um, 
give uh, gave another definition of uh, the equivalent of course, but maybe with a, I'm not sure uh, with a uh, different normalization uh, of the definition of irrationality exponent of x. Okay, and so this irrationality exponent. Uh, Yes, helps us to measure how uh, well is a, a real number x is approximated by rational numbers. And uh, the key idea to have in mind is, uh, okay, so thanks to this uh, uh, inequality and the definition of mu, we can show that if the irrationality exponent of x uh, is finite here, so qk plus 1 is less than the power of qk. Yes, uh, I should have mentioned that, um, of course, the qk sequence is increasing, but it, it increases at least exponentially. But if, uh, say, x cannot be too well approximated by uh, irrational, uh, then the growth of uh, the sequence qk cannot be too rapid. And uh, again, what can happen? So let's go back to uh, here. What happens if uh, the sequence of best denominators grows uh, too fast? Uh, then it may happen that nx can be very close from integer for, say, small values of n, so producing some irregularities. So now, how to make a, a, a real connection between uh, these uh, theory of continued fraction of uh, the irrationality exponent and um, the distance from nx to the closest integer. Uh, this is a problem actually of distribution modulo 1 and uh, to get something effective and we can use some effective bound for the discrepancy of the sequence n uh, times x. And so this is a tool you can use here. So, uh, for instance, this is a classical result. You can uh, pick in QPES. Oh, sorry for the uh, misspelling. Neither writer book. So here we have a bound uh, of the discrepancy of Q uh, K X uh, involving the irrationality exponent. And so this will uh, tell us that uh, we have a well distribution of the multiple of X. That will help us to prove that H2 cannot be too irregular uh, in the neighborhood of some x. And on the other side, uh, since H2 has a dense set of discontinuities, actually the rational number, we can have, uh, we can get quite easily a lower bound, uh, an upper bound for the other exponent. Uh, so we can consider a jump uh, not far from uh, x and write uh, this simple, simple equality. One of these two quantities, the red of the blue, is larger than uh, Sn over 2, and then you apply the definition of uh, the other exponent. You use the fact that uh, the sequence uh, of rational is dense, and you can get such a lower bound, uh, an upper bound. And it turns out uh, that the two, the lower bound and the upper bound that you can get with this method match. And so we get a uh, uh, Jaffa result, which is 1997, not 1977. And uh, so we compute, uh, uh, okay, so we have the other exponents. And it turns out also that we know uh, the Hausdorff dimension of the set of, in, of um, numbers that share the same irrationality exponent, uh, mu, which is 2 over mu. And thanks to this, you can get uh, the multifactor spectrum uh, of the H2 function, which is so, uh, so this function is multifractal. Okay. And in fact, uh, well, uh, uh, sorry, yes, so, and uh, Jaffa studied more generally uh, infinite series of the form as uh, a neighbor, uh, weighted, uh, sorry, a weighted sum of dilatation of B, where he A n is a summable uh, L1 sequence. 
Um, okay, and in fact, this function uh, were encountered uh, uh, sooner in the literature. They are known as uh, Davenport series because uh, with the name of Davenport, which uh, settles settled a problem on this uh, fun uh, series, and this is what I'm going to talk now. This is the Davenport's problem from uh, in 1937. So again, consider the sawtooth uh, function and uh, its uh, Fourier expansion, which hold for every uh, uh, real number x, and consider the following uh, calculus, formal calculus. Consider uh, arithmetic function g, which uh, okay from um, uh, and start to C with complex value. You consider this uh, sum and you insert in this uh, sum the uh, Fourier expansion of B. You rearrange the summation and here appears the Dirichlet convolution product of G with the function uh, which is always equal to one. And Davenport asks, uh, asks the following question. When does this identity hold? So this is in fact a third case question in one. First, when does this series converge? When does this series converge? And when do the sums are the same? And it turns out that it's a very uh, tricky problem, uh, especially because uh, the, the examples we are interested in, we no longer have uh, absolute convergence uh, as we had uh, for the H2 functions uh, I uh, studied before. So I will only present uh, two uh, examples of, uh, of it uh, because of lack of time. So first, uh, the, uh, the example due to Davenport himself when G is the, mod mu, the Mobius function and here we have this very nice identity uh, okay, which, which holds for all value, uh, all real value, and uh, actually this result is very deep. And uh, Davenport uh, use uh, had to evaluate uh, exponential sum uh, with weight uh, mu of n, and for this he had to use uh, Vinogradov techniques to uh, address uh, exponential sums of our primes. And there, were, uh, there was no progress um, on this problem during about uh, 70 years until uh, Labortech and Tenenbaum uh, developed uh, a new approach based on the P summation, that is the summation on integers without large prime factors. And uh, with uh, this technique, they could uh, solve many uh, uh, examples uh, of uh, Davenport's identities. I only uh, give uh, one here, which is extremely interesting. Uh, so this is a case when G is uh, equal to uh, one constantly. So uh, the direct convolution product gives the number of divisors function. And so we have this identity formally and it holds but not for all uh, uh, real numbers. It holds for uh, all rational numbers, but for irrational, uh, we have a criterion here, a condition, uh, necessary and sufficient condition of convergence, uh, which involve, not uh, very surprisingly now, um, the sequence of the QK, the best denominators, and uh, so this series converge uh, if uh, do, uh, does not converge if the sequence of the bed denominator uh, uh, grows uh, too rapidly. Okay. Um, what is I'm going to? Ah, yes. So this is here. I give the the graph of uh, this function sum of b and x over n. And this is not the last time I'm, uh, I talk about this infinite, uh, infinite uh, Davenport series, actually. Yes, it turns out that this uh, infinite series appears in another uh, problem, 
which was considered by Bas Duarte, Balazar, Landro, and Sayas in 2005. Uh, they were interested in the following function, A, which is the multiplicative autocorrelation of the fractional part uh, function with a weight dt over t squared. So they were in interested in this function because it appears when studying the Niemann criterion from Riemann hypothesis. Um, this criterion uh, led them to study some Gram-Schmidt determinant and um, some coefficients of the matrices uh, can be uh, expressed with uh, this A function. And so they decided to, to, have a, to, uh, to study this function. They could uh, obtain a graph of it and observe that it seems that every rational point, the function A seems to reach a local uh, maximum and is not differentiable. And that, that's exactly uh, what they proved. And I will focus on the differential uh, differentiality matter. So the proof that A is not differentiable at every uh, rational point. And they, they got a more precise result, uh, actually. And the question was, of course, uh, what are the other uh, different, uh, differentiable points of A? Uh, there is an argument showing that A is almost everywhere differentiable. And uh, we solved this with uh, Balazar in 2013. Uh, there was, after that, another proof by Lavotech and Tenenbaum of uh, the fact that the differentiability points are exactly the point of convergence of uh, our Davenport series uh, we encountered uh, before. And why is that? Because actually there is a link, direct link between the A function and uh, this Davenport series. Uh, this is uh, an integral of it, modulo a differentiable function. And so we have a heuristic which fails actually uh, if x is a rational uh, number, but it works for uh, uh, irrational number. Uh, A is differentiable if and only if this uh, infinite series, infinite Davenport series is convergent. Okay, so, okay, I have to look at the time. Wow, okay. Uh, now, I will now consider uh, what is generally the third example one gives uh, for a multifractal function. It's with, uh, this is the Riemann's, say, non differentiable function because it was believed at some times that it was uh, nowhere differentiable, which is actually not the case. So this is a lacunary uh, uh, trigonometric series, but less lacunary than a Weierstrass uh, function. Uh, so, uh, yes, this was a long-standing problem actually to decide uh, if uh, this function was or not uh, nowhere differentiable. So how do we prove that um, for all points, except perhaps for uh, rational integer, which are quotient of two odd integers, uh, that R is uh, not, uh, does not belong to C uh, to the 3, 4 of X. So showing uh, that, there are, uh, that the function is not differentiable at these points. And uh, we'll have to wait uh, 1970 uh, and, uh, until Gerber proved that actually uh, R is differentiable at all um, rational integer uh, which are uh, of the form 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. You can see this here, for instance, uh, in 1. Uh, you can guess that uh, we don't, uh, we do not, uh, we did not have, um, uh, sorry, no informatic tools were available, of course, one century ago. Okay, and uh, the proof of Gerber was uh, simplified uh, uh, by Itatsu. And uh, Dustermatt also proposed another approach, yeah, uh, which was followed by uh, Jaffa in 1996 and uh, who could uh, achieve the multifactor analysis of uh, R and uh, computing so the other exponent. So here, again, uh, there is a direct uh, link 
between the other exponents and the irrationality exponent of uh, x, but actually not the irrationality exponent we made before, but a uh, slight variation of it. We only keep here the convergence where pk and qk are not both odd, and we will see uh, vaguely why uh, after that. So uh, there are, I present two methods to uh, address link functions. Uh, the first uh, is a uh, now very common tool in multifactor analysis is the use of uh, wavelet uh, coefficients. So the idea is the uh, following: you consider, say, a mother wavelet, so a psi function which is L1 bounded with average zero, and say in most examples with compact support or rapid decay at infinity. And so you consider here uh, a family uh, obtained by translation of, and dilatation of psi. And you consider the wavelet coefficient, the scalar product of f with uh, psi a and b. And so the idea is the following. Yes, I should have started uh, with that. The idea is the, is the following. You, you know that um, if f uh, is a L1 function, but which is very regular, then its Fourier transform tends uh, very rapidly to zero at infinity. And so by uh, contraposition, if the Fourier transform does not tend too fast uh, at infinity, we can derive from this that F uh, cannot be too regular. Uh, this, this is a, a global uh, piece of information on F, and we need something local, so the idea of wavelet because we can adjust here A and B to focus on a neighborhood uh, on X not here. So we use the fact here that uh, the um, mother wavelet has uh, average zero. And so here, uh, from this identity, we can say that if the wavelet coefficient is uh, not uh, is large, say, then the, the growth of f uh, cannot be too small. So this will, this will give us um, upper bound for the exponent. And with some absorption of regularity on f, sometimes you can actually uh, reconstruct uh, f from its Fourier uh, its wavelet coefficient. This is an inversion formula. And then you can get uh, the, on the other side an upper bound for uh, your uh, Herder exponents. So the, heurist, uh, the real heuristic principle is the following. So the wavelet coefficient uh, when a tend to zero and b tend to x naught is equivalent to eight a to the h, then uh, the other exponent is equal to h. Okay, and it turns out that here we have a wavelet with which uh, very well fitted uh, to the situation. This is one of the pi x minus i to the square, because by complex integration, it's quite easy, it's actually the Cauchy integration formula, to compute the wavelet coefficient of r for this, for this wavelet. And we obtain, uh, without many surprise, uh, the theta function, uh, Jacobi theta function. And the Okay, the key point uh, next of the argument is that we know how theta is transformed under the action of uh, the theta, theta modular group, so which is uh, generated by the modular transformation, uh, homographic transformation z plus 2 and 1 minus 1 over z. So uh, we have uh, this uh, formula which is um, uh, somehow some uh, say which says somehow that um, theta is a modular form of exponent one half and um, yes and the important fact the the, the well uh, yes sorry the important fact is that if we are just considering right now the uh, rational uh, there are uh, this gamma group uh, act on the rational, and there are actually two orbits, uh, the orbits of one, which are the rational where P and Q are odd, and the, uh, the orbits of zero, which uh, contains infinity, 
and the other rational. And this is this fact, I'm not going further into the detail, that explains uh, uh, the fact that we are using uh, the new star uh, irrationality exponent and also that there is a difference of behavior between uh, in the neighborhood of uh, this um, uh, rational where, where uh, P and Q are odd. And this is a, a very nice uh, proof here and I highly recommend uh, it. To, to win. Okay, and there, are, there were, after uh, Jaffar's work, there were uh, extensions of it uh, by considering other lacunary series arising from modular forms, and I here uh, give uh, some uh, references. Another method is uh, consists in uh, doing Fourier analysis. Uh, so here, uh, it's more convenient to consider this function instead of uh, the Riemann uh, function. Okay, and uh, we consider here, okay, uh, the growth of uh, T uh, at uh, rational. Okay, we can uh, rearrange the sum by um, uh, summing over the class of congruence of N. And then here we can use a Poisson summation formula, and that will split, let's say, the problem in two, two parts, an arithmetic part where a Gauss sum appears, and an analytic part, we have an integral here that uh, we have to evaluate asymptotically. And we can obtain here, so, an asymptotic uh, expansion, and here the arithmetic is completely captured by the Gauss sum, and we can, again, uh, um, studying the case where this uh, goes some cancel, we uh, find, again, uh, this uh, distinction between, uh, between rationals uh, for the R function. Okay, and we can, uh, the advantage of this method is that you can use it to uh, attack some um, uh, uh, Riemann uh, function, but without, uh, uh, sorry, instead of n square, you can consider uh, over polynomial. There is no, there is no uh, modular form behind it uh, anymore, but you can use what we know in number theory and, uh, let's say, um, more generalized uh, Gauss sum and obtain results, and that was that, uh, that is what Camiso and Ubis did a uh, few years ago. Okay. Now another example, I will come back uh, to uh, this Davenport uh, series. Uh, I recall the results by Lamentation Tenenbaum, and here uh, we would like actually to, uh, this function here is uh, quite familiar not really in number theory, but in dynamical systems. Uh, if we remove the minus one to decay, this is actually the Bruno function, uh, almost uh, what is called the Bruno function, which occurs when uh, studying uh, the iteration of a uh, holomorphic function in the neighborhood of a fixed point. So I, uh, I don't have time, uh, enough time to, to explain in details uh, what it is uh, about. Just, uh, just giving uh, the definition of the Bruno function. So uh, I give uh, actually two definitions, one involving explicitly uh, the continued fraction, the convergence of X, and another one which is very interesting, which involves uh, the Gauss uh, map. Uh, so this is T of X, this is one over X mod one, which is known to uh, generate actually the continued fraction expansion of a real number X. And if you extend this uh, phi function to R uh, to irrational by one periodicity, you get uh, what is called the Bruno function. Okay, and uh, some properties are known uh, on this function. So, as I said, uh, it very uh, looks like uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the infinite series uh, we, we've seen before without the minus one to decay. 
Uh, these convergent points are called actually Bruno numbers. So this function is uh, L1. It has actually, which uh, we have uh, here, a stronger pro property. It has a bounded mean uh, oscillation. And very important for our purpose, um, phi uh, satisfies a functional equation involving uh, the Gauss map T. Okay, and here this is a graph of a uh, function, and I borrow here the expression by uh, Tanguy a Bayer's Paul print, which is a very uh, meaningful, I think. And uh, okay, so this shows very highly uh, irregular local behavior, and so uh, we can try again to uh, to show that there is some multifactorial behavior. So of course, the uh, Bruno function is not bounded on any interval, so we have to use a slightly different notion of uh, other exponents. We will see that. But first, uh, first result on the local behavior of phi uh, was given by Balaza and myself in 2012. So we uh, identified the Lebesgue points of uh, the Bruno function. So for uh, L1 function, uh, local integrable functions, the Lebesgue points are, say, the points where f is uh, continuous in average uh, in, uh, at uh, x naught. And now, uh, the, the definition of uh, L1 under exponent for uh, phi is quite straightforward. We want to know here, this small O of 1, uh, we want to get a more precise uh, evaluation. We want to replace this by beta to the uh, rho uh, to the beta, and the other exponent will be the supremum of the beta, such that uh, this holds. And so this is the notion of uh, L1, L1 under the exponent of phi. So, okay, uh, this is exactly what I said. Uh, what I said. And we could compute uh, with uh, Jaffa uh, using wavelet arguments and also precising some estimates we got with uh, Michel Balazar. We could compute uh, the uh, other exponent of the Bruno function. And uh, again, it involves uh, irrationality exponent. Uh, that's all I wanted to say here. Okay, yes, this was the first example of a multifactor function, which uh, explicit multifactor function, which is not meant, uh, which was not specially built to be uh, highly irregular. Last situation of uh, number uh, in number theory. Uh, this was something uh, did by a rival in 2010. He considers the following situation. He wanted to study the distance between, so uh, the first multiples of x, but one, uh, to uh, a subset uh, of uh, the k of the n. Okay. And uh, so uh, the, yes, this led him to consider this uh, sum which can be, uh, uh, okay, you can write it like this with uh, the norm function, the distance to integer. Uh, the average of this function is one fourth. And to get some convergence, but not always, we consider a weighted sum of fn of x, and this gives uh, this uh, infinite series. And he was interested uh, for in uh, first in, uh, understanding the convergence of this infinite series. He could prove that uh, there is almost everywhere convergence, also in L2. He got some uh, sufficient condition of convergence for uh, the infinite series when S is between 0 and 1. Uh, it, it, it is still open, actually, to decide exactly uh, to have a, a good criterion of convergence for uh, this uh, G function. And he was actually interested in two things. Uh, first, he, uh, after computation, he could uh, draw uh, the graph of G. And this is very familiar to us because we encounter again this uh, bare power print uh, graph. And actually, this is no uh, big surprise because uh, there is a functional equation behind uh, the G function, probably there is one because it's uh, uh, 
yes, uh, there is nothing uh, on it uh, in pay uh, remarks paper, I think. And um, yes, and that uh, what? Sorry, yes. What I wanted to do to finish is, uh, in fact, that there are many infinite series uh, that have a functional equation uh, looking like uh, Bruno's function one. And so this explains why we have, uh, we can encounter some multifractal behavior. So I would like to uh, illustrate this uh, by again focusing on uh, this uh, Davenport series. Uh, you can get a functional equation uh, very nicely by considering the Sylvester identity. So uh, this is only, uh, you have to count points in a rectangle, uh, rectangular area here and to split the domain in two. And uh, you can get quite easily this identity. Uh, replacing now uh, the integral part by uh, fractional part and uh, making uh, integration by parts, we can get this approximated functional equation. And from such uh, an equation, you can uh, find again a quick convergence for uh, the H1 series, but you can get also uh, by combination, get a functional equation for H1. So I will jump uh, the detail here. Okay. You can get by elimination and some uh, convergence, uh, dealing with some convergence problem, you can uh, get uh, an expression here almost everywhere, but with more work, you, you can get something uh, uh, on all points, uh, an identity uh, at every point of convergence. And then you get an identity between this Davenport series and this alternate Bruno uh, series. And so you get some multifractal behavior because we already know how to do to deal with a Bruno function type. And in fact, there are plenty of approximated functional equations in the literature. And this is a way of uh, showing multifractal behavior. Now, uh, you have for this, there is a Tita Jacobi functional equation behind it. Here, this is uh, um, the sum uh, uh, studied by Wilton. Uh, the functional equation uh, here is linked to the functional equation of the zeta function, the zeta square function. Here again, you, thanks to the um, infinite expansion of cotangent, uh, you can get uh, a functional equation for this sum. And uh, here the same. And uh, this lead, this lead always to a multifactor study of some generalized Bruno function. And once you can do this, you can analyze multifactorly, multifactorly this function, you have a plenty uh, of example of multifactor functions. Okay, and I have uh, one last two minutes to speak about something else, not uh, directly related to multifactor behavior, but uh, uh, addressed by Rivol. He was very interested actually in some um, maximal value, uh, external value of uh, the series he encountered. I forgot to mention, but uh, I presented the G1 series of Rival, but uh, in series of uh, four or five papers, introduced many uh, series uh, of this kind. Uh, there is a lot of open question in it, very interesting. And here he was so interested in the problem of finding the external value. And here, if you can make a zoom on it, you can observe that probably, yeah, it seems that the minimum is uh, rich as uh, at uh, the golden value, golden ratio, which is quite reminiscent from uh, some uh, res uh, results in uh, uh, discrepancies theory. And we show, uh, in this spirit with uh, Balaza, we show that the, multi the Bruno function actually also reached a minimum in, uh, at uh, the golden ratio. And we use strongly the fact that this is actually a, a consequence of the sole fact that uh, phi, uh, the Bruno function, satisfies uh, a nice functional equation uh, involving the Gauss, uh, the Gauss map. Okay, I think that's 
Oh yes, sorry, I, I won't need to, to finish the, the view that. Um, this was, a, yes, as a conclusion, I wanted to share with you uh, some Christian Modui intuition he had. Uh, it seems that uh, it attended, I think in the 90s, 19s, uh, a talk given, I don't know, by Yves Meyer, maybe, or Stéphane Jaffar, and uh, he heard about this uh, higher wavelet, and we, he was quite uh, fascinated by this uh, exponent, power of two, and he had not the idea, but the intuition that one could use wavelet analysis with uh, this higher wavelet basis to study the distribution of binary digits instead of discrete Fourier analysis, because he had the feeling that maybe a Fourier analysis was not enough to, uh, to reach a further results like uh, the sum of cubes, uh, the binary sum of cubes. But I, I tried to, uh, to I, I came up with nothing with it. It doesn't seem to be very well adapted to detect um, arithmetic progression, but yes, maybe there is something behind it. Some uh, Christian Moldy's intuition shouldn't be uh, left behind like that. So, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have some time for questions. Are there any questions or remarks? So please indicate in the chat. No questions? Yes? Pierre is typing something. We are waiting. Yeah, can you read it, Bruno? Mm, uh, ah, uh, ah, yes, it's a public discussion, sorry. Yes. What are the conditions for the inverse wavelet transform? Uh, I'm not sure. It depends on the wavelet uh, you use, the regulator of the wavelet. But uh, for instance, you have to know that um, uh, that you have uh, some Halder continuity. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you satisfied, Pierre Yves, for further you questions? Need some, you, you, you need some global uh, regularity to, to use it. So. Yes, uh, for this uh, specific uh, situation for the Riemann function, uh, I think you, you can prove quite easily that this is a C1 half and uh, this enables you to, to get this inverse formula. Is further typing? Uh, no, no, the, the function you are studying, I mean, the, um, ah, for the mother wavelet? Oh, no, no. You, uh, for this situation, I think, yes, you need probably uh, it to be C infinite, something like this. Uh, yes, that, that would be better, but uh, with a, uh, a rapid decay at infinity. But this is not the problem. The problem is uh, rather than the, the function f you, you are studying has to be uh, regular enough. Yes. 